Hello everyone. Um, I'm recording this after the SMO round one is over and obviously I hope that you guys did well. Now some of you are now hearing things about the SIMO team and you are just asking me or your teachers uh, how does it work and I thought that this is just uh, something that should have been addressed a long time ago um, by myself or someone uh, and so I'm just going to talk about how the rough process is with the caveat that um, there is some degree of flexibility that the SIMO committee has in terms of how they want to do things. So there's some flexibility and so what I'm stating here may not be 100% accurate every year but it should give you an idea of how things function. Now there's uh, question number zero and answer number zero is that SIMO uh, is the Singapore uh, International Math Olympiad, so the Singapore IMO. And of course, SIMO on its own is short form for the SIMO team. So uh, the Singapore International Math Olympiad team is what uh, SIMO team is. Um, that is a little bit of a misnomer because uh, you're going to see that uh, sometimes when you talk to your friends and you see they're in the SIMO team and they're like, but they're not in the IMO team. Well, those are not the same thing. You see, the SIMO team uh, is split into the junior team, the senior team, and not the open team, the national team. which is sort of similar to a lot of other countries uh, training set up at the national level where there are a few different categories. It's just that um, the names of our teams are kind of conveniently uh, named. So let me explain how do you get into them. Now the junior team, when we talk about the team, uh, there is a selection. The junior team is via the junior round two. Now, in the rough vicinity of about 30 students will be in the junior team. About 30 students are in the junior team. Uh, by default, my understanding is that there is no repeat uh, participation in the junior team. So what this means is that the junior team is from the junior round two, they will pick like around the top 30 who did not already join the junior team. So if you are in, let's say, year one, sec one, you get into the junior team. The next year, you're not going to go into the junior team again. The reason is that the junior team, the training itself is about uh, six sessions, which are all on geometry. That's because in Singapore, our geometry sticks. So uh, six sessions are all in geometry and it ends off with a test. So it ends with a five question, three hour test that is similar to the junior round two, but again, I must emphasize all geometry. Based on this test, if you do well in this test, you can get into the senior team directly as sort of like a shortcut into the senior team. The number of students who get through from the junior team to the senior team uh, very often can be something like five to 10, but it depends also on something else. That's because for the senior team, you can also enter in via the senior round two, obviously. Now to enter into the senior team via senior round two, again, uh, this is going to be roughly about 10 to 15 students, but it varies. For instance, last year's senior round two in 2023 was ridiculously hard such that many people in the top 30 didn't even solve a single question in round two. Now that makes it very difficult to select people into the senior team from the senior round two, which means that, for example, they may select less people from the senior round two and more people crossed over from the junior team, or 
sometimes they also will take from the open round two. So the open round two, why are they using the open round two? Because imagine that you are in sec one, you're year one, you managed to get into the junior team and then after that you failed the selection test so-called into the senior team. So, so you are in the junior team but then you didn't get into the senior team. Now, then when you're in sec two, you don't get to take the junior team test again because you only get to take part once. So then the Simon team does not want to encourage someone to purposely not get into the junior team in sec one so that they have a better chance of getting directly from the junior team into the senior team in sec two. That doesn't make any sense. So if let's say that you are in sec two, it is possible that via open round two with a slightly lower bar than the um, the national team requirement which i'll talk about in a second you can get into the senior team now all this is flexible because the senior team you can have repeat participants so it is possible for someone to be in the senior team for more than one year Now the junior team training is basically a fixed set of lessons. The, the test is going to change, but the lessons are fixed. The senior team is sort of like semi-fixed. There's some things that change and some things that remain the same. And that's why a student could repeat being in the senior team. Now there is, however, no entry from the senior team into the national team. The national team is only directly from the open round two. It is roughly going to be about 20 to 25 students. And this is for Singaporeans and permanent residents only because that's where they select the IMO team from. So the open round two, this is how it is used. It is primarily for selecting the national team, which is why sometimes they call it a national team selection, but that's rather confusingly named, as I'm going to explain in a second. Being in the senior team and the national team will have some privileges. Right? So being in the senior team uh, and the national team allows you to be able to join the Simo camp, which is actually ongoing right now as this video is being uploaded and published. The Simo camp is a few days in the June holidays. Uh, this is primarily just for fun. Um, it is just for fun for the most part. There will be training, there will be some games, there will be, uh, it's a chance for you to also meet some of the ex-IMO participants uh, and more of the teachers. Um, it's actually a camp to an extent, but uh, it's math, so it's, it's fun. If you like math, you find it fun. Um, the Simo camp is in the June holidays. Um, and in recent times, it actually includes the selection for the CWMI and the CGMO. This is the China Western and the China Girls uh, Math Olympiads or CWMI is Math Invitational. You get to also take the APMO. Uh, this is the Asia Pacific Math Olympiad, not the APMO PS, that's the primary school one. Uh, this is the APMO, uh, this is in the March holidays. Um, sorry, I forgot to mention, uh, it includes the selection, right? The, obviously, it, the selection is done in the Simo camp and then the actual competitions in China. The Simo camp is very much in Singapore. Uh, the APMO, you get to take part. This one is in Singapore. Um, it is an international competition that is taken in Singapore. Apart from that, um, the Simo team and national team, there will just be some general other like resources that are available and that's great, but these are the main like confirmed checkpoints that are almost always true. Now, specifically for the national team, the national team is 
going to have a different set of trainings every year. Now, the reason why it's different is that so you can repeat uh, as many times as you want. The trainers are essentially volunteers who are usually ex-IMO participants from Singapore and therefore they have the necessary experience the perk for them, among other things, is that they do get a sponsored trip to the IMO. Uh, so plus the, the fixed teachers and profs that are in the SIMO community committee. The trainers for the national team, there will be a few of them, and so it would be new uh, topics uh, slash problems each year. Now the national team at the end of the training cycle, somewhere around the vicinity of April, March to April, but usually around that period, so end March to early April, is where there is the NTST. This is the National Team Selection Test. Now, the NTST is not a test, it is actually a series of tests. Right now, uh, it is over two weekends of uh, so Saturday and Sunday. Each day there's a paper, so that means there are four papers in the IMO format of three questions and four and a half hours. From here, you get the top six students and one or two reserves. Uh, I was the reserve a couple of times, so uh, painfully aware of the existence of reserves. Um, one or two reserves and the top six uh, will be the ones who get into the IMO team itself. And as you see, Ken, this is early April, right? So the cycle repeats after the national team selection test. In early April, they will have selected the IMO team. Uh, and then for everyone else in the national team, you need to re-qualify. Uh, you need to re-qualify in through the open round two again. So it's not auto-renewal. For junior, there is no repeats. For senior, you need to qualify again. For national team, you also need to qualify again. Now, this is the semi-official setup, there are other things that um, there are available. For example, the CMO, the China Math Olympiad itself, there is also a selection for um, which the CMO itself is held sometime in the end of the year. Uh, I can't remember exactly the, the month right now, um, but the CMO is also one that students are able to take a selection for when you are in the national team. Now this sounds like a lot, right? So for those of you who are in the Simo team right now, you kind of know all of this already and maybe you are going to correct me in the comment section below. But for everyone else, I just want you to have a glimpse at what's going on. Understand that uh, there are many layers to how our um, Olympiad setup is like. The SMO is just the first step, right? Because when we talk about the junior, senior and open round two, uh, there is obviously the round ones that are leading into it. Which leads me to one final um, privilege of being in the senior and national team. Being in the senior and national team will allow you to take the round two without round one. So you're allowed to take the open round two, but only as a selection test. So for example, if you are um, sick or you are overseas or somehow you just messed up your open round one and you're in the senior or national team, you will be allowed to take the open round two as well. Like, so that's why the number of people sitting in the lecture theatre for the open round 2 may be more than the number of qualifiers. They can take it, but they will not be ranked. So they would still get whatever ranking that is based on their round 1, or if they didn't take it at all, they will still not get an SMO award. But they have a chance of qualifying for the national team. 
all the senior team. I hope this answers questions. I cannot have uh, summarized this into two sentences and that's why I've made a separate video for this. Um, apologies for uh, poor handwriting. This is a uh, very uh, habitual thing for people in the national team as well. Poor handwriting, so my sympathies to the professors who have to read all our handwritings when we were students. Let me know if you have any more questions in the comment section below. and. Uh, also, for those of you who are watching this before the SMO round two and are hoping to get into one of these, all the best to you.